oh, here's a good story. Here's a really good one. Um, so do you know about Charles Innes? Have you heard about this guy? No. Charles Innes is, a, is the quintessential drug scare story character. He's the man who smoked angel dust and tore out both of his eyes and went completely insane. He's the poster child for the horrors of PCP. Hunter S. Thompson wrote about Charles Innes in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, talking, and it's kind of a, in a few different sections, it's like in the news. It was happening in 1971 at the same time that he was writing Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. So this was a topical story about the horrors of drugs in America, right? And this is talked about endlessly. It's got a lot of media at the time. Don't smoke PCP. You could end up like Charles Innes, the man who tore out his eyes. So one dark and stormy night, I get an email from Charles Innes. And I think, there's no way. Char like, first of all, this was maybe a decade ago, and I didn't know anything about, about even how blind people use computers. So I thought, Charles Innes, the man who tore out both of his eyes, is watching my TV show and is writing me an email. This has got to be a troll. There's no way this is the same Charles Innes. So we start talking. Eventually, we, we talk on the phone, and I realize that this is indeed the real Charles Innes. This is How really, old was he at the time? I think he was in his early 20s. I think he was a Johns Hopkins University student at the oh, time. Oh, when he, in the 1970s? Yeah. Well, when he's emailing you. Oh, now he's, I think, probably in his 70s or 80s. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, um, and, and so he starts telling me his story, and surprise, surprise, the story is completely, completely different from what was described in the media. What really happened to him isn't a story about the horrors of PCP at all. It's a story about the horrors of police brutality. And it is something that I don't think has ever even been publicly discussed. He was a kind of, I think, a low-level weed dealer in Baltimore in the 60s. And he got set up by some cops. They, they wanted to entrap him in a buy. So they said, listen, we've got this uh, amazing hash and we want to sell it to you. We've got the best price. But to make sure that you're not a cop, you have to bring a little cocaine with you. And if you bring the cocaine, we'll know that you're legit. So he has no idea that he's being set up. He goes to this buy. He looks at the hash, and he decides that it is of inferior quality, and he doesn't want to buy it. And he says, yeah, sorry. I'm not interested. I don't want this stuff. So he leaves the room and gets tackled and arrested and they search him and find the cocaine and say well you've still got cocaine on you even though you didn't buy this cannabis and he says well you can't do that that's entrapment the only reason i had this cocaine is that you insisted that i bring it so he gets a lawyer and he succeeds in defending himself the charges are dropped but he pisses off the baltimore police department in doing this because he's just embarrassed them so some local guy who he thinks is a police informant, calls him up and says, you know, listen, man, like, I, I am sorry about what happened to you, but I've got a gift for you. It's this, this drug, it's like acid, and it's uh, sprayed onto parsley, and I'm gonna, I've got a lot of it, so I want to give some to you. And he said, is this angel dust? If it is, I'm not interested. And he said, no, it's not angel dust. It's not PCP. This is some, some amazing new psychedelic, and it's going to blow your mind. So, um, like, take it. It's good. So he takes this canister of plant material and puts it on his shelf or something. Then an hour later, the police raid his apartment. He realizes that he's been set up again. He runs to the canister and eats all of the contents of it, knowing that they're going to arrest him for it. And PCP is a, a powerful dissociative anesthetic, so he loses consciousness. He blacks out entirely. They lock him up without any kind of medical supervision, and in his delirious state, he doesn't tear out his own eyes, but he damages his eyes severely enough that he has never recovered his vision. He scratches his eyes in some oh, way. Oh, Jesus. And, um, and, and this is the sort of story that will be brought up as a don't-smoke-PCP story, someone who is entrapped, neglected, abused, has nothing to do whatsoever with PCP. Oh, God. That's horrible. <sighs> and 
And this happens all the time. This yeah. is not, that's not an extraordinary story. Drugs are such an amazing scapegoat. They're so good as tools to diminish people, to show that they're weak, that they're bad, that they're of low moral character of one kind or another. And the moment that we abandon all of those stigmas, the moment they can't be used as a tool against us anymore. Mm. God, that's fucking horrible. It is horrible. <laughs> 